Business and Financial Radio Network, Voice America Business. Good day, and welcome to PR Insider with your host, Maureen Kettis. PR Insider is brought to you by www.us.cision.com, whose world-famous Bacon's Media Database is updated more than 10,000 times per day. Take your PR to the next level. Now, here's your host, Maureen Kettis. Good morning. Welcome to PR Insider. I'm your host, Maureen Kettis. I'm very excited about today's show. Because we have two guests today who will, who will rock your world. First, Jerome Cleary, a hilarious, dry, sarcastic comedian who's also a publicist and a journalist. And Emmy Award winning Ray Brunet, who uh, has produced more than 15,000 hours of unscripted TV and has won four Emmys. So I'll introduce both of them in just a minute. But if you tuned into our last show on Navigating the Media Jungle, it was a learning show, very technical, and it was all about Cision, our, our wonderful sponsor, who has the best media database in the world and can help all of us publicists look really, really good to a client and can even help you make friends with the media who, before Cision came along, kind of hated us. Now, don't deny it, they did. If you missed it, log on to prinsider.biz and click on the blue radio show button, and then on the left are all the archive shows. The last show got so technical, in fact, that my executive producer, John Missel, who, bless his heart, is a really good producer, but he's a lousy publicist. So he got in so over his head that he actually turned blonde for a minute. And At least I know he wasn't snoring during the show because he spent the whole hour counting how many times I or my guests said, uh, and he was very proud of himself. So John... In America, listen up. Today's show is all about the hilarious personal war stories from my time and my guest time on the PR media war front. Today's show is called The Oprah Mystique. Why? Because any publicist will tell you that one of the first questions Joe Blow potential client asks is, can you get me on Oprah? And that's when my heartburn kicks in. Now, if your potential new client has just saved a village in Africa by teaching them how to farm genetically enhanced broccoli while simultaneously manufacturing motherboards for Macintosh, and then they wrote this heartbreaking, tear-jerking, best-selling book all about it, well then, yes, I would say there's a strong chance I could get you on Oprah. On the other hand, if your client invented a special tape with horse hair stuck to it that covers scalp scars from bad plastic surgery facelifts, or has created a rhinestone-covered portable poopy bag, or has zit-zapping cosmetic pencils, Well, then we need to learn how to be realistic, what PR expectations should be, how to pitch those, and learn what other media options are out there for those unusual clients. To help me share these stories, my first guest, a headlining comedian at the world-famous Laugh Factory and Comedy Store, both in Hollywood. Watch him on JeromeCleary.com. He's a print journalist, a host of Jerome on the Town, a local cable access show, and Most of you don't know this, but Jerome was also my former VP at VertexPR.com. He has seen it all, and he kept me laughing while we worked. We had some hilarious run-ins with media members on the celebrity and VIP tapings and red carpet events and met some of the most bizarre clients ever, being that we are based in the heart of Hollywood. My second guest is Ray Brunet. He's a four-time Emmy uh, Emmy Award-winning producer of over 15,000 hours of unscripted TV, including Good Good Morning America Sunday. KTLA Morning News, World News Now, E! News Live, and Weekend. He headed up Merv Griffin's TV division where he did Lisa Williams' Life Among the Dead for Lifetime and Merv's cross, uh, Crosswords. And the shows uh, Guardian Angel and Second Verdict are his as well. You will find him at www.yannibrunientertainment.com. Jerome and Ray, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So um, let's talk first about Oprah. Why is she so feared? Why does she have this mystique? Why is she so revered? Yes. Why does she Why does she have this mystique? Why, I, why, I think, why is that the ultimate question that every client would ask you? I think because they know that over the years, if she puts uh, a guest on or her her she condones what they're doing or she she sort of knights them on the show, that they that person may sell millions of books or sell millions of products or their business will, you know, explode or go boom. But as you were saying, a lot of people who are clients um, aren't right for the Oprah show. They don't fit into that niche. And it's comparable to someone coming to you as a client saying, I want to be, you know, I want to be the president, be in the White House, because sometimes you can't 
there's there's certain clients' dream lists that you would like to aim for, but you cannot guarantee or get those because they're out of the league or they don't fit properly what that show, you know, uh, promotes. What, what about you, Ray? What do you think? Why does she have so? Why does she have this sort of mystique about her? What like it's the ultimate when there's all these other great outlets out there? Like for example, you you worked on Good Morning America. Why is the Oprah show so? Important. I think because she got so much press with uh, her book club and how she can make instant, uh, you know, bestsellers out of books when people appear on those shows. A but, booking on her show is the holy grail of bookings. Right. So it's so it's more than just her appeal. It's actual bottom line numbers that she. Yeah, really but do. it's not just Oprah on even on GMA Sunday, which was a relatively medium to low rated show when I produced it. Uh, we would have. Uh, stars perform on the show, and then they would. We had um, a woman named um, uh, Billy Myers who performed a song on the show, and then the next week it was reported in broadcasting that they saw a bump in her sales because she came on our show and performed, and so people saw, heard and saw the song. Right. So, so it's, not, it's not just Oprah. There are other shows that can also, you know, get a bump in sales, but Oprah is the one who who people see see or think of when they hear that. Right. Now I remember, you know, too, like. Um, trying to sell, uh, you know, selling all the time to Oprah and other shows. And you have to, you know, I think one thing, one mistake the publicists do a lot is they sort of write this cover letter and it's not tailored to the show and they don't, they're not really familiar with the show or they're vaguely familiar with it, but they don't really know how to pitch the show. So if you if you, you want to get on Oprah, you have to really know, uh, you know, what their media calendar is coming up and, and really tailor each pitch so you can't be doing these mass mass mailings. It's just not going to get you uh, get you very far. Right, but more than that, you have to watch the show first. Yes. <laughs> you have to see what they're doing. You have to watch the credits and see which producer produced which segments. Right. And ultimately, you want to settle yourself on a certain producer who then you target. Right your segment too because they have done segments similar to that in the past. Right, exactly. That's why that decision, I mean, I'm not fawning over my uh, my sponsor, but it really does come in handy because it gives you all that little detailed information. Um, I did I did a campaign with the, the AIDS bracelet. That was my campaign, and and, uh, and we got that on Oprah. And I remember, <laughs> I remember pushing it, pushing it, but and there, and there, was, there was Oprah doing my, you know, right to the camera, doing basically a commercial for my client. You know, actually, we got so many calls, it blew out the phone lines. But um, I mean, how'd you get that booked on Oprah? Just out of curiosity. Well, what I did was I piggy, but there was a, there was a, a group called the Day of um, the Day of Compassion, and what they wanted to do, their aim was it was a nonprofit, was to get all the me- media members to um, take responsibility for about HIV and AIDS and put some programming on, um, uh, you know, that uh, that had to do with it, from a soap opera with a simple line to you know doing a whole segment. And so I said to the, that foundation, I'll help you guys if I can piggyback my client, which was the AIDS bracelet, on the back of that. So that's what we did. We did this big campaign out first to tell everybody they have to mention HIV and AIDS on a certain day in, in their programming content. So that gave them something to do. They were happy. And yeah, immediately you did well. following that was my client. I had the heads up, you know, because I, I did the first campaign, so I knew. <laughs> so that's how I did that one. But uh, it's, you know, um, yeah, we've had some. Jerome, we've had some yeah, no, no, no. But, uh, you know, I was going to say what Ray, Ray had said is, is really important. Watching the shows, seeing which producers have helped produce that segment, and it is really about relationships because you are among many publicists going towards an editor or a segment producer, trying to get a minute or two to pitch a client beside your email or sending them a package, and it's really about um, gaining their trust in a professional relationship and not catching them at a bad time. I mean, when I call a lot of people in the media, I will ask, is this a good time or a bad time? Because I do not want to try to, like, bring up something new or pitch something if they're really distracted or they're in the middle of something. Oh, the last yeah. thing I, I want to I, I got I got hung up on yesterday from, from someone from your old show. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, Ray, uh, somebody over at KTLA Morning News. Really? Give me a name. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not going to give you a name on the air, but yeah, she was like, "Yeah, yeah, send it to me in an email, click." Right. And. Uh, but you know what? That's the way I prefer to be pitched ideas is through email. Yeah. Or oh mail. yeah. Oh, so that's you, and that's what, you know that's the information you can get like on Cision or whatever. Or you keep your own, you know, as Jerome does, keeps his own. You know, Jerome has a what do we call a used steel trap memory, so he'll remember every producer and every 
single way they like right. emails, and he has, you know, he's, you know, you establish these relationships for a long time. A lot of the shows, there's, you know, huge matriculation, and there's some new person. But I, I literally follow producers. Like I've, I've advised producers that are working, let's say, in cable news, like at Fox. There's a couple girls I used to work with. I used to book my clients on whatever show, and then. Um, you know, we uh, we I stay in touch with them, and then they call me. Hey, I got this offer over at this show. What do you think? And then I say, Well, you know, that's what. It is. And uh, over the years, and they always take my stories. You know, because, because of the friendship that's evolved. Right. So. And also, you don't pitch crap. And right. that's, that, that's, that's a big right. problem when you when you're stuck with some client who's got a piece of crap that you got to pitch. It's really difficult to try to get that on a show. Yeah, so let's talk about crap. <laughs> let's, sometimes just what's some of the crap that you've seen, Ray? No, but sometimes just two kind of clients. Before we go into that, there's a kind that have a great marketing budget and sort of made to be a mediocre thing a mediocre as, a, product. as a product or thing. And the other client has an unbelievable thing, but they don't have the marketing budget to hire a publicist for a long time to build the foundation. Or they don't understand uh, you know, they don't take your advice. Like I, I had a skincare line, and we we get an we got an amazing uh, amount of uh, print publications done. But I wanted them to change their. They needed to update their image, you know, to to be more online friendly and to just have a more hip look. They would have done. They did a lot, but they could have done three times more. But um, oh, we've had. I mean, I'm sure we've all had some doozy. <laughs> Well, it's all on how they're packaged. What? It's all on how it's packaged. It's, I okay, mean, yeah. I had one client who wanted to pitch um, a new drink, Vegemite. It's an Australian drink. They were trying to bring it over to the U.S. Uh-huh. And the drink itself is not visual. It's very difficult to uh-huh. to book a segment on TV. But ultimately, we decided, okay, get some koalas, get some, some <laughs> kangaroos, bring some more Australia stuff with you. So we can make it an Australian segment, and then, you know, the anchor can hold the koala, which is always a cute and cuddly shot. Right. And the kangaroos can jump around the room, and people can get scared of them. And it's, it's, it's great TV to do it that way, rather than just come on, show your bottle of Vegemite, and say, you know, this is what I'm promoting. Wow, that's clever. And I have mm-hmm. I have a story, too, with Regis and Kelly and a pregnancy story. Um, we, we're going to have to take a break here uh, in a minute, but uh, we've been talking with headlining comedian comedian from the world-famous Laugh Factory and Comedy Store, both in Hollywood, uh, Jerome Cleary, and Ray Bruni, four-time Emmy Award-winning producer of Good Morning America Sunday, and you can find him at yannibrunientertainment.com. If you've missed any of the shows so far, don't forget, go to prinsider.biz, and we're on live every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, and we do take call-ins and emailed questions. So go to PR Insider, email me your questions, and sign up for our alerts and our free prizes. We will be right back in a minute. The Internet's only all-business and financial radio network, Voice America Business. Webster's Dictionary defines a vertex as the highest point, the summit. The word vertex is derived from Latin, meaning to turn or to spin. If you have a product or service that needs exposure to a desired marketplace, shouldn't the idea be to reach the summit? To turn the tide of public opinion in your favor? To put some positive spin on so that success is in your future? If you run a major corporation and pay for expensive in-house public relations services, or if you're working from home yet need to know how to promote your new product or service, or if you fall somewhere in between, Vertex Communications, a public relations firm, is here to turn the tide on public opinion for you and your product. Vertex Communications, helping you communicate to the Vertex. Contact Vertex Communications at VertexPR.com to get an honest, straightforward assessment of your PR profile and a plan that will work for you, not against you. That's V-E-R-T-E-X-P-R.com. Communicate to the Vertex. Is your job heavenly or closer to hell on earth? Maybe it's time you stop waiting on employers to make you satisfied and learn how to recognize your own career contentment. Jeff Garden and his expert guests show you how every Thursday at 12 noon Pacific when you tune in to Career Contentment Radio on the Voice America Business Radio Network. Contentment is yours to control and easier to achieve than happiness or satisfaction. 
Vision's communication intelligence allows organizations to tell their story effectively. Whether they're speaking to TV networks or social networks, the company's Vision Point web platform integrates the world-class Bacon's media database with global media monitoring and analysis services. It gives communications professionals the tools they need to optimize their performance and build corporate and brand reputation. Find us on the web at www.us.cision.com. That's us.cision.com. The bottom line in business. Voice America Business. You're listening to PR Insider with your host, Maureen Kettis, brought to you by Cision on the web at us.cision.com. Maureen and her guests would love to hear from you during the live show. Please call in to 1-866-472-5790. That's 1-866-472-5790. You can also email your questions to be addressed on the show. Send your email to Maureen at prinsider.biz. That's Maureen at prinsider.biz. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to PR Insider, sponsored by Decision. Visit them at their website, us.cision.com, the leading tool for publicists. I'm your host, Maureen Kettis. We've been talking with Jerome Cleary, who I call a triple threat because he's a publicist, a media member, and a comedian, and Ray Brunet, a four-time Emmy Award-winning live TV producer. So we were talking about, well, <laughs> clients with crappy, crappy products. We don't want to call them crappy clients. Um, and packaging. Um, I, I just want to tell one quick story. Um, and, Jerome, I think you'll remember this. Um, I had uh, Adidas, the maternity line, when this was a big deal. You know, nobody was doing maternity fitness wear. And so we convinced Kelly Ripa, who was pregnant, to uh, don this outfit um, but they didn't want to do a free advertisement. They kept saying, it's like a free advertisement. So we made a catwalk fashion show and found a manufacturer of a belly, a pregnancy belly for men so that they feel pregnant, so they can sympathize with their wives. So so we just put on this pregnancy belly. And Kelly and some other pregnant ladies did a fashion show with my client's product, and then we threw in, we found some other maternity clothes. So that's how we got it in. Do you remember that? Very clever. Yeah, very, very clever. So, okay, so packaging. Let's talk about packaging. Jerome, you want to start? Um, I think packaging is really important. Sometimes a client comes with you with something that looks too commercialized. It looks already like a, a, an ad or a, just a, a promo. promo for a product. Let's say it's a vitamin product or something else, and we've had to sort of dismantle that and rebuild it up in a different direction. So it's considered a breaking medical news story. It's considered a legitimate um, story. Remember those, uh, we used to do those uh, show ideas, yeah. inserts with like possible topic ideas, which gets the producer, I don't know, what do you think of that, Ray? When you see, a, well, you said you told the story of the Australian vitamin drink, but what makes a good package to you? Um, well, for TV, it's certainly something that's visual. Mm-hmm. But for me, more importantly, with, with KTLA when I was there, the most important thing for me was to make our anchors look good. Wow, really? Yeah, I mean, uh, that was my goal throughout the entire show. So every guest we had on, I would have to evaluate beforehand, you know, are they going to make my anchors look stupid, dumb, crazy, um, whatever, because I want the anchors to look like they're in control, that they're the ones who know what they're talking so, about. So that's interesting. I have never heard that. So tell me what – I never thought of that when I was pitching. So yeah, what, you've got to be very protective of your talent, I mean, all the time. So tell me what would make a client – what would make an anchor look good or not look good? Give well, an example. Well, keep in mind, one example is A-list stars. The majority of A-list stars are lousy interviews. They're boring. They're dull. Wow. They don't want to reveal too much about it. Can, we, can we name some names? I'd rather not name any names. <laughs> Who's the biggest bore? But, you know, it, it? It, A, yeah. on, the, on the A side, it's good to see your talent with an A-list celebrity because then people equate them with that popularity and status. But on the other side, the interviews are very dull. They're very boring. Um, So you really have to be careful when you book an A-list star because they're not going to make your talent look great because the star is not willing to go too far to have fun. Well, with the exception of some comedians or... Yeah, there's there's always exceptions, right. But But you you have... Don't you have to have a quota of celebrities on these shows? I mean... Yes, but you know what? I I would book Richard Simmons over... um, uh, Give me an A-list star. The Australian woman... uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, Charlize Theron. Okay. Okay, Charlize. Yeah, I would book, <laughs> I would book Richard Simmons over her any day because Richard Simmons is wild and crazy, and you never know what's going to happen next, and he's unpredictable. Right. And uh, you know these these A list stars will just sit there and smile and talk about their product or their, their their new film, and they won't give you any insight into their lives or any any personal anecdotes. And it's just. It's but what about the ratings? I mean, don't don't the fact that you're going to have someone like a Charlize Theron on the show is not going to bring the ratings up. Well, promoting it is, but normally if we do that, we would we would tape the interview so we can control it earlier and, and make it more interesting. With okay, the, so when you're pre-taping an interview, how do you control? Because it's it's controlled in post. We can add sound and and um, video and clips and. Oh, so she's she's talking, blah blah blah. Right, so exactly. Fabulous, and then you clip to something. And we've got some exciting clip running while she's talking about jumping out of this airplane or whatever. She's and do the celebrities? I would think they would prefer to be pre-taped anyway. They would, yes. Because they're not used to doing live TV. And especially with the A-list celebrities, they don't want to be asked, you know, questions about their boyfriend or whatever, so mm -hmm. they prefer a tape so they know what's going to get out there. Mm -hmm. Huh, because, I mean, I've done, I've done, you know, booked some stuff, like, for instance, Paul Abdul on The View, and we were working with this uh, mini Clegg, uh, like a I, I, little iTunes thing. And um, she was uh, entertaining, but that's a different format because they have five, five women. Right, and you also know in advance usually because you've you've either seen them do interviews before or you've booked them before. You know who's good doing interviews and who's not. Right, she's a she's a wildfire that one. Right, you never exactly. know what you're going to get. <laughs> or Tom, what, yeah. tell us about the meetings. Like when you go in to sit down with potential stories, yeah, you guys always, take? This, that's a good question, Jerome. Because we always hear like we, we pitch, 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 and then we have whoever we're pitching to says, "Oh, I'm going to I'm taking this to the production meeting. I really like it. I'm going to take it to the production meeting." And you're waiting on on bated breath for those two three days until production meeting breaks, and you find out whether your segment's getting on. So what goes on in those production meetings? Well, first of all, if you're in L.A. today, you probably noticed that all the news is blown out because of this wildfire that's burning. Right. So if you were booked on today's show, your segment's gone. And unless it's a really good segment, it's going to be difficult to rebook it because all the next days are already booked with other stuff. Right. Um, the meetings that we have, um, basically, myself as executive producer, is pitched all the the shows that the producers, or all the ideas that the segment producers have weeded out to the, the final five maybe that they have. And then from there we decide which ones are going to work. We decide which talent is going to do the the uh, interview, whether it's going to be, you know, the female talent or the male talent or the weather guy or, uh, you know, the the uh, Hollywood entertainment guy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've, I've had a uh, crew run out, say, because there was a car chase or something that they decided that that's what they were going to go to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and they cancel your segment. I've had, oh, my gosh, I had the Kosovo War breakout. I had a client booked on, you know, international media and the war broke out. I had another client booked on a bunch of talk shows, and um, and Catherine Hepburn died. <laughs> and those things happen Catherine, can you die tomorrow? Just throw out the the show and start all over again. Yeah, and then they're not interested, and then it, like, lost, it loses its fizzle, and that's all. And then you tell the client, I guess you want all these things, and they're like, it didn't happen, you know, so they... That's awful when that happens to a well, client. One, one time I sent out a press release, I was wondering why, what something was going on, and I found that it was one of the Harry Potter uh, premieres, you know, on, on Hollywood Boulevard, the release of the movie. Yeah, sometimes you don't, you, you know, you, you keep <laughs> everything set. I had a, a Stevie Wonder thing going on, and somebody over at, K, well, Gail Anderson over at KTLA, I right. hope she forgives me someday, but um, the, the w woman who was in charge for the client with, you know, the event coordinating didn't communicate to me the event that was going on. The whole street was blocked off, so she couldn't get her truck in. I mean, we were all ready to go with the satellite, the feed, the whole thing. So, yeah, that can be really frustrating. So the, so the mysterious production meeting, so you all sit around the table and... We all sit around the table. Keep in mind, there are, just KTLA alone today has four segments that they need to book each day where you come into the set. And then there are two other segments where Gail Anderson and the other woman go out and do live reports from somewhere else. So that's six segments a day that we have to book and fill, whether it's with celebrities and authors or demos or whatever else, you know, authors, whatever we're doing. Um, so there's a lot of time there to fill, and there's a lot of opportunity for people to get their segments on the air. So let me ask you, do you get your ideas from these production meetings, or are you getting your ideas from the publicists? Like, are the publicists sending you all the ideas and you're plowing through them, or are you sitting around thinking, this is the direction we want to go? Well, it's, it's a combination of both, and it's also a combination of what's in the news, because if there's, 
you know, if, if, if there's a breaking news story that we want to do a sidebar on, mm-hmm. and we know a publicist might have uh, a client who can talk about, uh, you know, protecting yourself in a wildfire or how to protect your, your property or whatever, we would, we would call them on right. to do that in a last-minute pitch. I'm so sorry, tell me involved. what your question was again. Pardon? Tell me what your question was again. I lost track. No, no, that was that was that was right. I mean, what, where are you where are you getting your ideas from? Are they mainly coming from publicists, or are they coming from within? No, they're coming from publicists for the most part. Oh, that's great, really. So, yeah, oh. and we prefer publicists over somebody just writing in and saying, "Hey, I've got this idea. Could you, you know, put me on the air?" We okay, prefer... so that's a great point. Now, why? Why do you prefer? I always tell clients this: it's it's so much classier to see. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, "Hey, I'm great." It's another thing to have someone saying, "Hey, she's great." So, but tell me why, from your perspective, that's so. Well, for several reasons. First of all, because you've already weeded out the people that wouldn't make it on the air anyway. So you're not going to take a client who you know you can't you can't get their product on the air. Okay. So that saves us a lot of work. Secondly, if if we've had some of your other clients on the air and they've performed well, then we start trusting you more as far as putting your clients on the air more than someone else's because you have a track record of delivering great clients and great segments. So you do remember us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because <laughs> I know with my company, with Vertex, I have this kind of interesting No, in logo. fact, um, as uh, you remember, Maureen, one time we got a call from one of those afternoon shows that's not on the air anymore, but they called us because someone canceled, and we immediately cold-picked a whole bunch of ideas on the phone. Yeah, yeah. No, we um, And then got, got the many of those down there calls. that afternoon to tape. Yeah, we got many of those calls. That was always exciting. It's like, wow, they're calling us now for ideas. But we were always, um, Jerome and I have an improv background. That's how we met years and years and years ago in a class. So, you know, somebody can call and go, do you have an idea on blah, blah, blah? And and our answer is always yes. And then in the pause between the word yes and the next paragraph, you make something (laughs) up. And then you say, yes, I'm going to get right back to you with a bullet-pointed list of how we can work it into the show. It's going to be great. Give me five minutes. So um, we're going to have to take another break in a second. Um, well, could you do some improv for us while we wait for the break? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, this if show I have no outline for. We are without <laughs> a net. I, this is the only show I've done so far with absolutely no outline. Um, we're going to take a break in a second. Just remember, um, email me a question. We can use, And if we use it on the air, you get a PR credit card worth $500 off of your next campaign at vertexpr.com, and you get a CD copy of this show. Go to prinsider.biz to learn more. Uh, we need to take a, a break here. I'm your host, Maureen Kettis. We are going to be back in a minute with the wonderful Mr. Messieurs Jerome Cleary and Ray Brunet. Tune in, and we'll be right back. From the stock market floor to your laptop, we are Voice America Business. Vision's communication intelligence allows organizations to tell their story effectively. Whether they're speaking to TV networks or social networks, the company's Vision Point web platform integrates the world-class Bacon's media database with global media monitoring and analysis services. It gives communications professionals the tools they need to optimize their performance and build corporate and brand reputation. Find us on the web at www.us.cision.com. That's us.cision.com. C-I-S-I-O-N dot com. Life can be full of risks. One thing you shouldn't take a risk with ever is your family's health insurance. If you're self-employed or an individual and you need affordable health insurance, you need to make this free call right now and see how the Mega Life and Health Insurance Company can help you get it. We specialize in helping the self-employed and individuals just like you who need affordable health insurance to get it. So call us right now. 888-459-4825. 888 888-459- Five nine four eight two five. Don't take a risk with your family's health insurance. It's not worth it. If you're self-employed or an individual and you need affordable health insurance, call us now and see how we can help you. 888-459-4825. 888-459-4825. 888-459-4825. Home office, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Not available in all states. Benefits may vary by state. 
Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines a vertex as the highest point, the summit. The word vertex is derived from Latin, meaning to turn or to spin. If you have a product or service that needs exposure to a desired marketplace, shouldn't the idea be to reach the summit? To turn the tide of public opinion in your favor? To put some positive spin on so that success is in your future? If you run a major corporation and pay for expensive in-house public relations services, or if you're working from home yet need to know how to promote your new product or service, or if you fall somewhere in between. Vertex Communications, a public relations firm, is here to turn the tide on public opinion for you and your product. Vertex Communications, helping you communicate to the Vertex. Contact Vertex Communications at VertexPR.com to get an honest, straightforward assessment of your PR profile and a plan that will work for you, not against you. That's V-E-R-T-E-X-P-R.com. Communicate to the Vertex. From the stock market floor to your laptop, we are Voice America Business. You're listening to PR Insider with your host, Maureen Kettis, brought to you by Cision on the web at us.cision.com. Maureen and her guests would love to hear from you during the live show. Please call in to 1-866-472-5790. That's 1-866-472-5790. You can also email your questions to be addressed on the show. Send your email to Maureen at prinsider.biz. That's Maureen at prinsider.biz. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. This is your host, Maureen Kennis. I'm on live with Jerome Cleary and Ray Brunet from both sides of the media game, the live television game. Good morning, America, The View and Oprah and all those kind of shows. Um, we were talking about the scary pit, the production meeting, and, and uh, Ray dispelled some of the myths of what goes on. Um, and I was really surprised to hear that um, most of your pitches come from publicists. This is fantastic. Absolutely. So we love that. Um, I want to go through. Uh, Jerome uh, taught me a, a really valuable lesson years ago because Jerome is one of these guys. Well, he doesn't have kids, so he can read all the newspapers. And he plows through all the newspapers, and he pulls these interesting stories and ties them into whatever our clients are doing or selling. So, um, Jerome, you want to tell a story about the sidebars? Yeah, I think that um, a lot of your inspiration comes as a publicist, and I'm sure as a segment producer too, but, uh, you know, flipping through Time Magazine or seeing some story in the past, like I saw when they said that more blue-collar men were going to therapy because of Tony Soprano. They found it more acceptable. So I took that and pitched it with my psychotherapist client about his practice and how it's changed because of that, and we did a segment. That, That one went through very easily and quickly. Because um, I had the reference of a major national magazine, mm-hmm. and I had a client and the angle to pitch, so it, it fit perfectly in with. Uh, so yeah, that, and you had the celebrity thing, the celebrity cachet of the story, which was that Tony Soprano goes to. Um, well, yeah, that that part too, of course. Yeah, and if you have a health client, for example, and there's something going on in the news, um, you know, like when nine eleven, I had a health client, and uh, she was way before anybody was talking about. Um, you know the, the crisis to people's lungs and what, what all these fumes were doing. She was, I need to get on and tell people. I need to get on and tell people. But that was a hard sell because um, everybody was still trying to find their lost ones. You know they weren't worried about future illnesses, so that was like that. That didn't work out for the timing wise. Um, but Ray, from your perspective, going the, the the how important is what's going on in the news and the sidebar? Tell, tell us about what sidebars mean to you. Sidebars are always used in news, you know, whenever the, whatever the big story is, we always try to find two or three more angles be, to cover it because we have two or three hours to fill, and each hour we want something different. So maybe in one hour we'll do one sidebar, and the second hour we'll do a second sidebar following the main main big story. So if you're trying to pitch something to us, look, at, look and see what's topical in the news right now and then how your client or that product can fit into what we're doing with the newscast. So can you think of an example? I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but an example of, of, of a sidebar that worked for you. No? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I can think of one. Wasn't there uh, one we did with our client uh, about the uh, slicing of the melons, melons and salmonella? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that, there was that. <clears throat> and that's con- not considered a long segment. It's considered a sidebar, I would right, say. Right, right, right. We got her on the air with that, mm-hmm. and she, that was the same client that wanted to do yeah. uh, the, the 9-11. Yeah. 
And then when it came up again, they wanted to use it again later on. Like right, right. And then ago. suddenly she became the but, um, voice of Salmonella. Ray, wouldn't you say that um, this is true, but not only in your end as a segment producer, but also as a uh, publicist, you have to have um, good instincts, intuition, and you have to have the mutability to go with the flow with the opportunity when it comes up. Like as we're pitching you, you know that we've researched and we've, done, you know, we've worked with our clients and we've done a screening process that you trust me and Maureen and other publicists that the higher probability is that the segment will go well and it won't, fall, it won't be hollow and fall apart. It, it will be legitimate. Absolutely. It, yeah, the instincts and intuition work a lot that you have, you know, the right feel and tone to take with each person you're working with um, by email or over the phone as you get to know them and develop a relationship. And you've also done a lot of the work for us, which is, yes. we appreciate that because, you know, we're always understaffed with these these cases. Right. Right. Yeah, actually, that brings up a good point because I used to always try to almost um, produce a segment without making the producer feel as though I'm producing the segment. Meaning, I, I, I literally would outline what it's going to look like, what they could do, you know, with different options in each one, so that I hand them a sheet, and on that sheet is a whole complete segment that fits into their show, into, into their style, and, um, you know, contacting them in a way that they like. And that's when you get the reputation, and then they start to know you, and they take your calls, and they answer your emails. Um, tell me, do you have any stories of, of publicists that are have done obnoxious things <laughs> that annoy you, or uh, can you think, think of any? They're pushing mediocre stuff or, all the time. Or I have, I have some obnoxious media stories, I'm sure. <laughs> can you think of any, guys? Just annoying uh, clients and or annoying media members. And well, you know, them. actually, I, I was going to say this. I've run into where either I reminded someone of somebody where there was a hurdle between me and an editor or a segment producer. They They just did not weren't interested in anything I had to offer, and I started to think it had to do with personality. Yeah, yeah. Because I was bringing the same stories to these other segment producers and people, and they, you know, at times took the segments. Right. Well, I know one thing that it tends to annoy the media is if you don't know the show, so you're wasting the, the producer's time. And uh, you call them at the wrong time. You don't pay attention to, like, when they're actually taping their live show. <laughs> you're, have you ever had that happen? Oh, right. yeah, all the time. People have no idea what time the show's on the air, yeah. what we're up to, what we're doing. You know, what, we covered that story already two days ago. Yeah, and it's so, and it's, it's, it's uh, you know, you can't keep up with everything, but at least know when you're, when the show that you're calling is taping because you're, you're bothering the guy in the middle of this stressful work environment. So, of course, they're not going to listen to you. Um, and then that brings us to the point of um, c- celebrities <clears throat> because we have to bring celebrities on. And we have to tie celebrities into segments to make them sexier. And uh, Jerome and I had so many uh, crazy experiences with that. Uh, we were working with plastic surgeons. <laughs> no, but it changed, the market's changed a lot. I would even say in the past decade that they want... The plastic were, surgery market? No, they want... They want yeah, but, but besides Dr. Nina, it's one other stuff. That now when they do segments, I mean, I remember Entertainment Center, they're like, well, we have to have a celebrity attached. And years ago, they would never say that. But the the, um, the bar had been raised that it was very celebrity driven. Right, right. But we had um, so we in the beginning we were uh, getting these you know fledgling soap stars, aging fledgling soap stars, and uh, oh, we had all kinds of things. We had uh, you know one of the things you don't want to have happen is you want your client to be ready. So we had a we had a doctor that was. Um, getting ready to operate uh, live, you know, with the cameras running. The patient was out, and the patient was a, you know, F-level celebrity, um, and she was getting a breast enhancement, and um, he only had one, <laughs> one, one uh, what is it, silicone package arrived. The breast implant. So he had cut her open, everything was ready to go, and there was only one boob. And <laughs> the cameras were rolling. How I mean, could he not have been prepared for that? To know I, you know... You know, and then you now you have to backtrack because you've been taught touting how this is the best plastic surgeon in all of Hollywood right. and all of Beverly Hills, and uh, you know a mistake happened. Probably not on, not from him, but from his the woman who uh, is in charge of making sure all the equipment's in the operating room. But those are those are scary moments. Uh, we did another one with um, uh, a dermatological office, and they were trying out a new laser on a on a patient 
um, who offered to go on TV, and what they didn't realize is how incredibly painful it is, and they hadn't numbed her up at all. So she was getting, like, live torture on television. <laughs> <laughs> so we quickly took the cameras back to on, focus on the doctors and did an interview, you know, with that, and, and then just showed her later in an in a after shot, and I convinced them to not... That was a not, that was a pre-recorded segment, so we 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 delayed. This. That's very uh, I love Lucy uh, fabish. <laughs> well, celebrities are tough. I've had many problems with celebrities. Well, let's hear some. One is um, I don't want to name names. Oh come on! Name no, names. We, we won't guess. We'll... Okay, we're gonna guess. Okay, you can guess. She's a blonde, beautiful singer from the early '90s who sang with her sister and another uh, another singer. I know. This. She came on. And she missed her segment because her hair wasn't ready yet. Winona Judd. No, 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 no. Blonde. Carney. China Phillips. Oh, uh, China Phillips. Okay, so because her hair wasn't done? Her hair wasn't done yet. She was still working on her hair. You know, she didn't come in in time to be prepared for her segment on the show. And ultimately, so we had to throw the whole show in turmoil to move things around to get her on the air in time. Oh. And by the time she got on, the anchors were so frustrated with all the changes and things that were going on that the interview turned out really bad because they had a negative they were holding on to <laughs> on her <laughs> they're like look i get up at four in the morning her, yeah, come it, out it, here and get into makeup and shit exactly it affected it affected their performance right and they're and the, you know the singer is like 19 years old and perfect looking right oh she was beautiful on the air she looked gorgeous right what does she have to worry about but right, she's right. a celebrity oh and another, another celebrity once refused to go on the air until we changed her key lighting she didn't think the key light was in oh. the right place oh i got who uh she was beautiful. That's the point. She, you know, you know, you could have put the worst lighting on her, and she'd still be stunningly beautiful. And she just wouldn't go on. She wouldn't go on. So what do you do? What do you do to fill that? Well, ultimately, what we had to do was we had to kick our main anchor out of her seat and put the star in that seat oh. because she, the the woman preferred main anchor's uh, lighting. Wow. Now, did her publicist? forewarn you that she's crazy about lighting and we have to go and get it right and get it before she arrives. Not at all. She just walked into the studio to do her segment, saw yes, the so lighting. So I blame the publicist for that, not the celebrity. I mean, I don't know if it's happened before or not. But well, but maybe the, maybe the celebrity does not mention it to the last minute because that's the only way she wants to get it done her way. But if they've done lots of segments before, and usually they have because there's somebody, was it an A-list person? Uh, no, it was B. B-list person? Um you know, you've done a bunch of you know segments. You know what the lighting's like, so you set it up ahead of time. And you, you know, we Jerome and I created these taping confirmations that every public, every uh, producer has you know thanked us for. They are so completely detailed with everything on one sheet with every contact. I mean, when you're sending you know Paul Abdul to New York, you have to have every minute detailed with the right. drivers and the pickup and how she likes her lighting and her hair and her makeup, working coordinating with her publicist. You know, uh, I was representing the the uh, you know the product, but uh, you know you got to really really uh, get it all together. Oh, they're playing my music. Okay, so it's just so much fun. Celebrity slamming on PR Insider. So we need to take a st- uh, break for a moment. Um, this is your host Maureen Kettis on PR Insider, and we're going to be back in a minute with the two most gorgeous men in Hollywood: Jerome Cleary and Ray Rooney. The Internet's only all-business and financial radio network, Voice America Business. Webster's Dictionary defines a vertex as the highest point, the summit. The word vertex is derived from Latin, meaning to turn or to spin. If you have a product or service that needs exposure to a desired marketplace, shouldn't the idea be to reach the summit? To turn the tide of public opinion in your favor? To put some positive spin on so that success is in your future? If you run a major corporation and pay for expensive in-house public relations services, or if you're working from home yet need to know how to promote your new product or service, or if you fall somewhere in between, Vertex Communications, a public relations firm, is here to turn the tide on public opinion for you and your product. Vertex Communications, helping you communicate to the Vertex. Contact Vertex Communications at VertexPR.com to get an honest, straightforward assessment of your PR profile and a plan that will work for you, not against you. That's V-E-R-T-E-X-P-R.com. Communicate to the Vertex. 
Tune in every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time for The Growth Strategist with Aldana Ambler. On the show, Aldana and some of today's top business professionals will discuss some of today's most pressing business issues that hold you, the business owner, back. Aldana will also give you 21 ways to grow with her list of growth strategies. Grow smart, grow profit, and grow your business with Aldana Ambler and The Growth Strategist every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time right here on the bottom line in business talk voice america business Decisions communication intelligence allows organizations to tell their story effectively whether they're speaking to tv networks or social networks the company decision point web platform integrates the world-class bacon's media database with global media monitoring and analysis services it gives communications professionals the tools they need to optimize their performance and build corporate and brand reputation find us on the web at www.us.cision.com that's us. C-I-S-I-O-N dot com. The Internet's only all business and financial radio network, Voice America Business. You're listening to PR Insider with your host, Maureen Kettis, brought to you by Cision on the web at us.cision.com. Maureen and her guests would love to hear from you during the live show. Please call in to 1-866-472-5790. That's 1-866-472-5790. You can also email your questions to be addressed on the show. Send your email to Maureen at prinsider.biz. That's Maureen at prinsider.biz. Now, back to the show. Welcome back again to PR Insider. I'm your host, Ray Ketz, and I'm on live with Jerome Cleary and Ray Bruni. And we were dishing celebrities. Um, and I do want to talk more about the celebrity tie-in. Um, but in, during the break, Ray was telling us this funny story about how he got fired from Good Morning America. And, Ray, you're so brave to share that with us. So you want to tell, tell us a story? Sure. I was brought to ABC to produce a light morning show for GMA Sunday. They wanted to use that as their launch pad to see if it will eventually move over to the regular GMA the weekday. Mm-hmm. And they liked what we were doing in KTLA, so they wanted me to go and do that on GMA Sunday. Mm-hmm. So I started producing a much lighter show. This was around the time of the Monica Lewinsky scandal going on. Mm-hmm. And so um, I each week, each week, you know, the show was getting lighter and lighter, and we'd, have, we'd be doing more and more like we did on KTLA, which is just fun, crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so ultimately, Hoover, the vacuum cleaner company, called one day to book a kid on the show we call Vacuum Boy. <laughs> he was seven years old, and he was an expert on vacuum cleaners. He knew everything about vacuum cleaners, about the attachments, about the amps, and all the things that go with all the, you know, the Vacuum Boy. He was the cutest thing you ever saw. So we worked him into the show in several locations. We spilled chocolate syrup on the carpet, and he used the right attachments to clean it up, and... He talked about his tour of Hoover and uh, all the all the things. He was just like like uh, psychic. Uh, what's the word? Crazy about, <laughs> about vacuum cleaners. Obsessive compulsive, but yeah, we'll exactly. Talk about He's in therapy now. And it was a great segment. And then it, you know, then uh, Rosie put him on her show, and then it was on other shows. But the next day, I get a call at home and said, uh, "Ray, you're fired from ABC." Oh, that's a nice phone call. Why? Well, because I, it, it, it wasn't, I call it, I say it's because of Vacuum Boy, but technically it wasn't. It was because they they really weren't prepared to do the light shows that we were, that they brought me in to do. So Vacuum Boy sucked the life out of you. So I, I, I blame Vacuum Boy with the laugh. I, <laughs> oh I know. Well, we've all gotten fired. Uh, you know, I mean, from I think everybody in the world has gotten fired from something. It's always a shock, you know. Um, but, you know, I want to talk a little bit about um, unrealistic expectations because that's, you know, the Oprah mystique that we talked about at the beginning of the show is when a client comes to you and they have a product and, um, you know, they have these, 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 they think they're sort of the center of the universe. And they ha- and clients, if you're listening, you have to know that your product is one of a bazillion products and everybody has a publicist and everybody's out pitching. So you need to look for a publicist that can be really creative, can tie it into the news and do the sidebars like we were talking about, knows how to package you, like Ray mentioned, that drink, you know, packaged into a bigger story, or I mentioned the pregnancy 
uh, piece into a whole fashion show with other uh, um, uh, you know items that were going on in the news or whatever. Um, and you have to be realistic. And if and Jerome brought up a great point, which is tell your publicist everything. Don't hold back like you're talking to a lawyer yeah. from the opposition. Tell your publicist, I've already done this show, I've been on this show, or sometimes my product doesn't work. Like if you have technology, some, I've been having problems. Be upfront because the more prepared your publicist is, the more. Or you know, like I have a loose eye that dress. <laughs> <laughs> we have that problem. <laughs> Catch me. And then when we look at the tape later, they look like they were though. slightly insane. <laughs> oh my god! I had two doctors that you know had a. They were not very TV friendly. <laughs> one one was very sleepy, them. like he just wanted to bed all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and one had a lazy eye and a limp, and oh. Um, yeah, and you have to sort of, you know, they ha- you have to say to your publicist, you know, I have this problem with my eye. Should I be wearing glasses or should Yeah, we- but sometimes I don't think they're aware of it. And, you know, Maureen, you bring up a good point. Sometimes they have a, um, a reasonable expectations, but sometimes once they, get, once they get the taste of PR, then they think that they can move even faster and become bigger. Right, then they get, they get, um, they become the diva celebrity because suddenly they're getting a lot of hits. And you know they had a little little flurry of activity, of 15 minutes of fame, and and their expectations get out of hand. I mean, you can take one, you know, you have to if you if your publicist got you something, and I have an example of I worked with an eyeglass uh, frame company, and it only worked with them for three months. They had these tiny, tiny, tiny glasses when they were in style, and um, we managed. I called uh, Stephen Kukaruji, what how you say his name over at People Magazine, the style guy, you know that. Uh, He's very kind of flaming personality. And I said, do you have any pictures of celebrities wearing tiny frames? He says, oh, look. And we came up with a list of every celebrity we ever thought of that had tiny frames. Right? Remember, remember Jerome? We were right no, we found, and we found one pair on Jennifer Aniston. Right. And he found one, the one picture of Jennifer Aniston. And that thing ran and you a cover of USA Today's fashion section and, and, you know, five other places. That's all that that company could expect. That's a real, they're not going to get on Oprah with a pair of tiny glasses. That's the point on that. <laughs> Unless Oprah wants to wear tiny glasses. <laughs> that was a great way to frame the story, excuse the pun, but it really was because you did the work for us. Yes, it was all done. We handed, we handed you know, USA Today and the other newspapers in print. We, we actually even had the client buy the photo oh, for, do you, I don't for remember usage. That. Yeah, yeah. So, so tying in celebrities, um, Jerome, you want to talk a little bit about that? How do you... How do you um, a celebrity too. Well, like Ray had said about like if there's the fires or something pulls you away, there's been times where I had somebody else shoot the segment or do the B-roll or do the footage and gave it to Entertainment Tonight or through the A&E or something that I'd given them because they didn't have the budget after an award show to have a camera crew to come out and do the segment. Oh, right, the follow-up, follow-up piece. Yeah, yeah, so I had I had to then create the thing to make sure it went into the slot. Right, right. And uh, it happened a couple of times. You did some B-roll and just handed them a gift. Yeah, because they didn't have the crew. They couldn't do it. They had just done car chases and awards you know, a bunch of stuff. That time, there's been all this stuff with legal. Ray, how does that work now? Because, I mean, nowadays, you know, they go, well, I can't, we can't use that footage. It didn't come from, uh, you know, our camera, and it's not, you know, the legal department. There's, there's been that kind of – it used to be more sort of uh, maverick, wild, you know, wild, wild west, where we could hand them a tape and say, we shot this yesterday at your event. Well, there's two issues there. There's the fair use issue. If it's a newscast, you can pretty much get away with using it. However, if it's a union shop, then that's another issue. Right. So you've got to deal with those. Right, because issues. the union camera guys are saying you can't. Uh, use right, because you know, are using union. But how, how, how are they justifying it. all this viral stuff now? Where people are sending in video clips? Um, you know, how 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 are they getting around? Is that? it public domain? No, it's 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 more of there's a clause in the union contracts that allow that because it's it's something that they that. They couldn't actually get a union crew to shoot. Huh. So ours would be our our Maverick guys that are out there that we sometimes do. Um, that would be considered something that a, a union crew could do. Well, if it's if it's not breaking news, then you could you could conceivably send a crew out to shoot it. If it's you know if, if somebody gets a great shot of this wildfire that no one could possibly have gotten afterwards, then you can use it. It's fair use in that way. Right. Huh. I'm wondering if, if uh, you know, if it's if it's something because we used to do stuff where we would do behind the scenes. Photos. I think it was more medical segments or something that. Are you thinking of medical segments? Well, no, that's what it was. One of them was a procedure, and they didn't have the crew or the thing, and, and someone else we got to shoot it, and then they edited it from there. Yeah. 
I think it's a little harder now with all this legal stuff to do that kind of wild, wild west. Oh, well, let's ask this question. Uh, Ray, like how many emails do you get from publicists a day? Uh, during a regular business day, probably 25, 30. Wow. How many? 25 or 30. And does the oh. subject line or the person? I mean, from different publicists. Those, that's not. Does the subject line ones. grab you or is it the fact that you know the person? No, usually the ones that get my attention are the ones that I know. See, the so it's all we go back to. Segments. We talked about this in my first installment. It's all about the relationships. The relationships, and so you don't want to just blast email. You want to make sure your stories are good. You don't want to take clients that are lousy because you're out there trying to sell them. So don't, even though the money might be tempting, you have to say no to a lousy client because your reputation on the line, you know, tomorrow you'll have a different client and you'll be trying to sell them back to the same show and they won't take your call now. And you have to also know how to be con- how to contact the, the segment producer you're right. contacting. And that you can get through our sponsor decision. That's yeah, like for me, I prefer... Um, email. Okay, I don't like right. talking on the phone because I have to do too much work. I have to write down everything and start over from the beginning and tell me the whole story, whereas if you send me an email or a press release, mm-hmm. I've got all the facts right there. All right, guys. Well, that's all the time we have left for today. It went really fast. I want to yeah. thank my sponsor, Cision, my nephew, Doran, for the music, and uh, my executive producer, John Missile, for getting abused. And until the next um, episode, this is your host, Maureen Kettis. Have a great week. And don't forget to relate to your public, whoever they may be. Thanks again for listening to PR Insider with your host, Maureen Kettis. PR Insider is brought to you by Cision, helping communications experts navigate the sea of social media. Visit them on the web at us.cision.com. And make sure you join us again next Tuesday at noon Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific, on the Voice America Business Network. And have a great week.